Hi, Tim Cashel with the Evolve Academy, and in today's example of backgrounds as a canvas, we're going to be taking a look at areas of interest as it relates to LED walls. So here I've got uh, content coming to me on a single display port that's 2560 by 1600 tall. And the three LED walls I'm feeding, uh, two of them are 1024, 768, and one of them is 800 by 1080 tall. So what I need to do is I need to know, first of all, what are the starting pixel positions for each of these pieces of content? And that's what these numbers are here, uh, represented as X and Y coordinates. So in the Event Master software, I'm going to set up a destination that has three outputs with three different AOIs. OK, so now we're here inside of Barco's Event Master tool set, uh, running a simulator. And I'm going to show you a couple things just to uh, let you know what I've already pre-configured here. I've got uh, three SDIs that are already pre-configured as inputs. I have the display port here configured as a background source. Um, that background source is 2560 by 1600. So I've uh, gone in here and made it a dual link connector. Now to do that, obviously I had to take away the capacity from one of the other connectors on the card. And I chose to disable the uh, bottom HDMI port for that. I've also set the resolution here uh, to 2560 by 1600 uh, so that the simulator knows what resolution the background is. I've also activated the multi-viewer outputs so when we go to work in the multi-viewer that's already turned on. Now let's uh, set up the destination. So again we're using three outputs going to three pixel map processors for these LED walls. Uh, so we're going to start off with uh, in this case an HDMI. It could have easily been an SDI. Uh, as well, just a matter uh, just a matter of how you transmit to your processors. We're going to add a screen destination, and we're going to go ahead and drag the other two outputs to that destination. So now we're going to click on the destination, and we're going to go to the adjust tab here. Under the assign tab, we're going to go ahead and assign uh, at least three layers to this destination because again, we do have uh, three LED walls. Uh, we're using. So we want, might want to place content uh, on a particular wall. So to do that, we did, we'd need at least three layers. Uh, for the wide tab, we're going to go in there and we're going to set the canvas to use a background. And we're going to use background one. And we're going to apply that as the canvas. So now you see in a little window here, it's done a little reconfiguration. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out to the main workspace so you can see what it's done. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And this black square here uh, represents the background at 2560 by 1600. And you notice that our outputs are still laid out horizontally because we have not modified them. Uh, so now we're going to go into expert mode. And now we can uh, manipulate the output's positions independently. Now output 1 is already at uh, upper left corners at 0, 0. So it's in the right position for that first piece of content. So we're not going to move that. We're going to click on output 2, and instead of moving it manually with the mouse and being inaccurate, we're going to do it by the numbers. So down here in the offsets, uh, the H offset for that window is going to be 0 because it's up against the left edge of the content. And the vertical offset for that is going to be 832. So now you'll see that output 2 is here and the 0, 0 is roughly where the start of that uh, second piece of content is on our source. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect output 2 and select output 3. Now again, doing it by the numbers, our H offset according to my diagram is going to be 1600. And the vertical offset is going to be 200. OK, so now the uh, zero, 0, position for this output is in the relative position of the content uh, for that LED wall. Now, the, third, the, the last thing we have to do here is we actually have to specify our AOIs, or areas of interest, for each of these outputs. So what we're going to do there to do that is go and click on output 1. And we're going to scroll down further here uh, on that output. Now, just below your offsets are the area of interest. Uh, handles. So you can enter it uh, manually or you can do uh, with sliders. But I suggest you do it by the numbers uh, for accuracy. So our first area of interest is going to represent the 1024 by 768 piece of content that lives there. So we're going to go ahead and make our area of interest here 1024 and 768. Now 
one thing you have to remember, um, you notice what happened there is that I didn't unlock the aspect ratio. So I'm trying to give it a four by three aspect ratio and it's a 16 by nine output. So um, lesson learned, uh, unlock the aspect ratio before typing in your uh, pixel sizes. Okay, so now we have a 1024 by 768 area of interest uh, for output one. Now, nothing actually represents here. You don't see it. Uh, where you will see it is on the multi-viewer output um, later on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that same thing for output two. So again, we're going to deselect output one and reselect output two. Now, if you have multiple outputs selected, if you change the area of interest, it will change it for both outputs. Uh, but just as a matter of practice, I usually like to work with one output at a time. Um, that way, if I make a mistake, I'm not affecting two outputs. I'm only having to go back and change one output. So that's my little tip is uh, work with outputs independently. And, and remember, multi-selecting um, is not a real good thing to do because you could make changes to both uh, inadvertently. So output two, area of interest, 1024. And B size, 768. Okay. Lastly, output three. So again, deselect output two, reselect output three. Area of interest, according to my diagram from earlier, is going to be 800 wide by 1080 tall. So we're going to, for H size, 800. And for B size, we're going to leave it at 1080. Okay. So again, we've set up areas of interest. Uh, now again, notice what happened there is that I've gone out of aspect. This is again a 16 by nine output. And when I typed in the 800 wide, it gave me the corresponding V size uh, in 16.9. So again, disable the lock, go into V size here, and we're gonna change our second number to 1080. Okay, so now we have the right uh, pixel count for that area of interest. All right, so how do we see this? How do we know our areas, areas of interest are set up correctly? So what we're gonna do now is, first of all, we're gonna to go to the bottom left here to the uh, disk icon and we're gonna save because we've done a lot of work here we'd hate to lose. And next we're gonna to go to the multi-viewer. All right, now we're gonna only show us multi-viewer one because we only need to see one output at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and drag uh, the preview for screen destination one out here. And then I'm going to go ahead and resize it so it's a little bigger for everyone to see. But right away you can see that we have three green boxes and those green boxes correspond to the areas of interest for each of our outputs. This area is for 1024, 768 for output one, uh, 1024, 768 for output two and our uh, 1200 or eight, excuse me, 800 by 1080 for output three. Now we're, we have a little off a little part that's off here. So let's take a look and see what happened there. Maybe we've got uh, aspect ratios or something uh, incorrect. So going back to configuration, and we're gonna click on output two because that was the one that seemed to be bad. And of course, there is the problem. Uh, we forgot to disable the aspect ratio uh, when we were typing in the numbers either for horizontal or vertical. So it kept it in the 69, but 1024, 768 is a four by three. So I'm gonna unlock that. I'm gonna go here to the H size, type in 1024 and enter. And again, we're gonna go back to the multi-viewer and we see that that is now corrected. So now our areas of interest for output one and output two are 1024, 768. And our third piece of content is out here at uh, 800 wide by 1080 tall. Okay. So now let's take a look at this in the programming screen. So I've already uh, got a background. I, I have my background content that you saw at the beginning of the clip. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag that onto the preview space. Okay. So our content lives in these three areas. Uh, again, this is nice because if you create a graphic or a still image, that represents the areas that you're using for the LED walls, 
Uh, it makes it easier to program instead of guessing. Because in the programming screens, what you don't get is the green raster boxes to show you where those LED walls actually fall in the output. Okay. Now, the fact here on the multiviewer is, as you've actually seen, is that I typed in a number, but the numbers are not actually correct uh, for what I've got uh, actually coming from the content. So my area of interest is off from the actual graphic. Okay, so let's correct that. So I've gone back and looked at the graphic file and got the actual pixel coordinates for output three. So I'm gonna correct that now. We're gonna do output three, and we're gonna change the offset to 1400 by 225. Um, and now if we go to the multi-viewer, we can see that our raster box is actually, uh, for the out area of interest, is now in the correct place uh, for the content. So mistakes can be made, uh, so we can still correct them. Uh, we can move areas of interest around. Uh, and again, if you had a live multi-viewer, you could actually move the area of interest and see it changing um, on the live multi-viewer with the live content. All right, so back to our programming screen here. We have our background uh, with our little template screen of where our LED walls are. And we can go to our inputs and we can place them either on a particular LED wall or we can stretch them out across several of those LED walls. Since this is treated as one canvas, um, anything we do here with layers can either be constrained uh, to a particular LED wall by creating user keys and uh, making them fit particular sections, or we can stretch a layer across multiple walls. So for instance, if I were to take this source and let's go to the layer adjustment, and go to the sizing adjustments here, and if we were to break the aspect ratio by again, unlocking the aspect ratio lock, I could take this window and I could stretch it vertically across uh, those two LED walls if I wanted to. All right, so that's uh, using areas of interest with a background as a source uh, for your canvas size. And I am Tim Cashell with the Evolve Academy, and thank you for watching.